Hamilton Christian Center, we ask that you stand up and worship with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Welcome to HCC. We are so glad you are here this morning. And if you are new with us, we want to connect with you. 
And Marie right here is going to tell you how you can do that. There are a few ways to connect. You can either um, scan the QR code back in the back of the seat in front of you or fill out the connect card also in the back of the seat in front of you. And you can put the connect card in the offering buckets here up front or up in the front of the foyer into the welcome center. And now Macy is going to share a few of our next steps. So a few of our next steps. Um, we have a Discover class on November 1st at 6.30 p.m. to discover more about Hamilton Christian Center. So join us. And then we also have um, a baptism class on the week of October 22nd at 12.30. But the actual baptisms are the following week on October 29th during the 11 o'clock service. And now we will pass it on back to Blake to pray us into worship. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Lord, we are so thankful, Jesus. We just come to you come to you humbly this morning. We give you praise, God. You are worthy of all our praise, Lord Jesus. So we are so thankful. Holy Spirit, we ask that you just move mightily in this house this morning. Move upon the hearts of the people, Father. And we just give you our praise, give you our worship, and we love you, Jesus. In your precious name, amen. Oh 
come in this place right now, God. We ask that you just touch every heart and have your way in this place, Lord.
I'll still bless you in the middle of the road when I don't know where to go. We'll still bless you in the middle of my storm, in the middle of my pride, and we'll still bless you in the middle of the road when I don't know where to go. I'll still bless you, Lord. I'll still bless you, Lord. I'll still bless you, Lord. I'll still bless you. I'll still bless you, Lord. I'll still bless you, even in my pain, God. Just have your way, Jesus, in this place, Lord. I pray that you break chains in the name of Jesus. Anybody that's holding on to something, God, I pray that you help them. Set them free in the name of Jesus, God. You're worthy, God. I'll still bless you even in my pain when the devil tries to attack on my life, God. I'll still bless you, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. setting shame I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me look at your neighbor and say he is great and greatly to be praised I knew you could do it. Have a seat. We're doing things a little different today. For those of us who are eager to give, which I know there are many, we will do that at the end of service today. Friday night we had uh, what is known annually for us as an opportunity to rent out a local theme park known as Stricker's Grove. Uh, We have no way of knowing how many people attended this event, but we do know it was the most that we've ever had. We had a thousand uh, uh, cards that we handed out. We had a thousand glow necklaces that were gone with an hour left in the evening. Um, and that's just for the children. So we're saying somewhere probably around two to 3,000 people were in attendance Friday night. So thank you. I looked over and saw a family, uh, a whole family being prayed over by our prayer team in the prayer tent, and it just warmed my heart. Saw a lot of awesome conversations, a lot of invitation of people, us wearing our shirts, and people realizing this was a church that did this for us. So thank you for your hearts to love our community. You did an incredible, incredible job. In regard to that, if you attended with us Friday night and you received uh, an invite card, and you still have that card or don't have that card. We have cards here. So let me make this very clear. We are going to give away a very sizable and nice gift at the end of this service. If you lie, the Lord knows you're lying, okay? But we have given to liars before. So with that being said, we will still move forward and trust the Lord to judge you, not us. Um, So with that being said, if today... You were here with us on Friday, and you are a first-time guest with us in this service. I want to say that again. You were with us on Friday. You received one of those cards as you were exiting. Or we missed you because there were so many people. We missed some people. But you were with us Friday. You're here because of Friday, and you are a first-time guest with us. You're going to want to, trust me when I say this, you're going to want to move out of this sanctuary right now and find someone to help you get that card and put it in the box in the foyer, okay? If that is not the case in this service, we have a creative way to offer this gift to a new person at the end of service, but I want to give fair opportunity on the rules that we set, okay? So, if there is no one, but you are new here. How many people, by chance, this is their first time ever being at HCC, you're here today? Raise your hand. Roll roll tall. We got one. Anybody else? Very first time. Two, three. Dad, you've been here before. Uh, Don't raise your hand. (laughs) 
Oh, look at me. I, I'm, I've been here before too. So uh, you're not going to want to leave if you're new here today. Just trust me on that. Okay? All right? Everybody doing good? Awesome. Awesome. Hey, real quick, I do have an in-house announcement that I want to make, and it's baby dedication. We are going to dedicate babies, okay, uh, November 26th, if you would like that to happen. We have dedicated children, uh, you know, toddlers as well, um, so if you would like to dedicate your child unto the Lord, uh, we have a class for that, and that it's going to be happening, but just email kids K-I-D-S at H-C-C online dot org. Okay? Now, I'm ready to tell a couple of jokes. I got two today. Mm. What's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? Timing. I'm going to let that just settle in for a second. The other option is this. What's the difference between a good joke and a bad joke? <laughs> Timing. So, and we can, go, we can go either way. That's not two jokes. That's only one. So I guess I have three today. I get jokes sent to me now. It's awesome. I appreciate it so much. Because you, know, you all know I need help. So, Well... I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. For the, there's, there's people right now asking other people, I don't understand. Do you remember the joke growing up? If you weren't asked this, you're probably the newer generation. Maybe, I don't know. But, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? So, All right, we'll move on. I do want to acknowledge three amazing ladies that are in the house. We prayed diligently for Sandy, Kathy, and Mary. They were in Israel. They visited their bomb shelter at the hotel. They didn't intend on this, but they had to visit it at least a half a dozen times. They heard bombs actually hit the ground around them. So please, if you could stand at this time, ladies, we want to acknowledge how faithful God is. Go ahead and do that. Stand. Turn those lights back on so they can see their faces, please. My apologies up there. My cue was the word Israel for the booth, so that's on me. But ladies, there they are again. One more time. Let's give it up for them. Not yet. I've lost 10 pounds in two weeks. Not, no, don't applaud. There's, there, there's a reason. It's not a disease. So thank God for that. It's worse than that. On October 1st, clubs shut down. <laughs> I went the last four days. Every night. It was then and at that moment that I realized I have a problem. So I called my sponsor on Monday, October 2nd, Shane Hale, shout out. You guys think I'm joking, I'm not. Shane Hale, shout out to my Whole Foods sponsor in Mobile, Alabama. I called him after I about threw down about three bowls of Frosted Flakes. I was about to. After four nights in a row of flubs and popsicles and other cereal and other stuff. And I called and I said, Shane, I need your help. I'm calling my sugar sponsor. (laughs) So, Flubs, thank you for shutting down. I'll be back 10 pounds in a few months starting in March. We'll get back on the wagon when they open back up. I'm just kidding. Okay. If you're astute at all to what is going on in our world, you've seen these headlines. Israel declares war. How does this affect you? How does this affect me? On the other side of the world, a small nation of people surrounded by those who hate them. Israel is not exactly 
ignorant to the devices of the people around them. As a matter of fact, that's why their hotels have bomb shelters. That's why you are constantly, we have what's called tornado sirens. They have bomb sirens. They're used to this. But this one's a little different. As a matter of fact, this is 50 years almost to the date of a war known as Yom Kippur War in 1973 where Egypt and Syria bombed and attacked Israel. This time it's an organization, a terrorist organization, an evil people, a regime known as Hamas. They've invaded their land by sky and crossing the borders. Hundreds of people have been murdered, kidnapped, held for ransom. They have used their Facebooks and social medias to video beheadings and sending it to family members. They have marched women in their cities, bleeding from the area that only you could imagine after they've had their way with them. They have targeted elderly people who were old enough that they were babies and children during the Holocaust of the Nazis. These people have now experienced this twice. They've specifically targeted children. They beheaded 30 babies. They literally have gone home to home, door to door, looking for the most vulnerable people to assassinate them, kill them, murder them. Currently 1,200 dead, 2,800 injured. This could only lead to the, this could only lead, i got to make that very clear because some people are confused. If this happens on our homeland, I don't know that our president would, but I hope he would. Who knows what he would do. But Netanyahu has responded and said, I declare that Israel is at war. This terrorist, evil organization, absolutely without a doubt, funded by the nation of Iran, supported by the nation of Iran. You say, Pastor Curtis, that's a big stretch. No, it's not. PR person for Iran celebrated the attacks. He said this, We stand by the Palestinian fires until the liberation of Palestine and Jerusalem is completed. Iran also signaled that they are developing a nuclear weapon. Should this be concerning? Absolutely. In their own words, they've said this, wipe Israel off the face of the map. Iran has also said, it is possible, it is possible, they're celebrating the potential for us to witness the world without you. They didn't say you, they said America. This is, this is Iran saying this. To witness the world without America and Zionists. What are Zionists? People that support Israel. But you have best know that this slogan is attainable and surely can be achieved because the regime that is occupied in Jerusalem must be wiped off the map. Why am I sharing this with you today? We're in a series called Counterculture, so it's going to be relevant and you'll see how. But I'm taking a pause because we've got social media, we've got the news, we've got cable. I'm sure all of us have heard that Israel has declared war. What does that mean for us? Where should we stand on this? Because it would seem that even people in our White House are confused. Genesis chapter 12 says very clearly that God ordained a covenant with Abraham. And he said, I will make you a great nation and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Where should you stand on this? I can promise you, you shouldn't wave the Palestinian flag. Many, many years ago, the Bible predicted what we are seeing today. That in the end time events would revolve around a city called Jerusalem. Not Hamilton. 
not Cincinnati, not Fairfield, not Indianapolis, not Dayton, not Lexington, not Columbus, not even New York or L.A. The Bible did not say that. It said the end time events would revolve around a city that now occupies about 900,000 people, only a couple hundred thousand more than Cincinnati. A nation that only occupies 9 million people. The whole world, there would be a stage and an end time event, and this would need to happen before Jesus would come back. You say, Pastor Curtis, We've been here before. Not exactly. Let's look at the Bible. Zechariah, prophet of old. Nearly 3,000 years ago. Three th- I can't remember last year. How many are with me? Right? I can't remember what I was doing this time last year. It was fall. I know that. That's about it. But 3,000 years ago, a prophet anointed of the Spirit of God declared things that are happening Today, October 15th, 2023. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel, thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man. Spirit of man, those are three words you're going to want to remember within him. Listen to this. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness. Do you know what that means? Unreasonable behavior. When you drunk, you're an idiot. When you're drunk, you're not sober. When you're drunk, you make stupid decisions. What is the Bible saying? The nations around Jerusalem, the nations around Israel will have a drunkenness for her, for the city, for the land that it sits on. This is a geopolitical, geographical, and a holy war. To all the surrounding peoples, Drunkenness behavior all around the people around Israel when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. Why is the Bible saying Jerusalem? Wouldn't you think 3,000 years later, maybe like a lot of the cities in our world, they don't even exist anymore? No, it still exists. The Bible is not just what has happened, but it's what is happening. These are prophetic words. And it shall come, it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very Heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces. What is Hamas trying to do? What are the surrounding nations of Israel trying to do? It says, we will wipe them off the face of the planet. We will treat them as if they never existed. The Bible says it will be like a heavy stone. What's that mean? They really can't lift it. But they tried. And they will continue to try. All who would heave it away will surely be cut to pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Guys, this thing could really get even more hairy over there. They could develop more enemies and bring in more enemies. It's worth keeping your prayer toward. It's worth keeping your attention on. Isaiah 11 says this, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand against the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left. What am I talking about? The reason that we need to take a moment today, and I encourage you to read even more, follow up with what I'm preaching today, read the Bible, but the Bible makes it very clear that there's something that needs to happen before Christ will return. It's called the regathering of Jews to Israel. And this is what the Bible says about it, and I want to expound on it more when I'm done. It shall come to pass on that day that the Lord shall set his hand against the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria, Egypt, from Pathros and Cush and Elam and Shinar, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from all four corners of the earth. Guys, I don't know if you understand this fully, but there was a thing called the Holocaust where Hitler and Nazi Germany decided to exterminate six million Jews. 
and you know the history. And if you don't, I encourage that you do, because your generation, if you don't know it, will suddenly and surely repeat it. But they exterminated six million, murdered six million Jews while the world watched. Horrific events. Do you know what happened after World War I, World War II, after World War II, and after all of this was resolved? Do you know what happened? Did the Jews decide, I'll never go back to my homeland? No. They came back to Israel at record numbers. After six million of them were fearfully and awfully executed, their family members, they said, you know what our response to this is? We're God's people. We're going back to our land, and we're going to reside there. And May 14th, 1948, for the first time in recent human history, Israel was declared a nation. And proudly, I tell you that America was the first nation to side with them. I hope that we stay that way. What does this mean? In 2021, we saw the greatest rise since pre-COVID of American Jewish immigrants going back willingly to Israel. Record numbers, it was up 30%. Do you think these Jews are reading their Bible and then going, well, I better go back? Not really. It's God's word. He's already declared it. And it's literally happening. Israel has been doing well. Economically, people are coming back. And the surrounding enemies don't like it. In Ezekiel 37 and 38, I encourage you to read this because this is possibly what's happening. I am not without doubt saying to you today, this is going to happen next. But I promise you, according to the word, this will eventually happen. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen in six years. It may happen in 60 years. But we have to look at the Middle East right now and go, it's very potential that it happens. What happens? The Bible in Ezekiel speaks of Gog and Magog. It speaks of a people group, a tribe, a nation, a group of people that will partner with the enemy Satan and neighboring nations and will get hooks in their jaw and will be drug into a world war against Israel. And the Bible even goes as much to say, not Russia, because Russia didn't exist when Ezekiel wrote this. It said a nation to her north, a great nation, an evil nation, and a nation that will be drugged into a war, not willingly, but brought into it. We have to unpack this, church. I'm not trying to get political. I'm just spitting facts. The Bible has declared that this will happen. And if you're astute to all to what's going on in the Middle East, you see the propensity and the possibility of this. Because the first time in 20 500 years, Iran is an ally with Russia at an all-time high. Billions of dollars of weapon exchange. Iran has supported Russia against Ukraine, FYI. Russia has supported Iran with weaponry and helping them. And as a matter of fact, they're having the first conversation ever of having their own nuclear weapon. You say, Pastor Curtis, this is kind of harsh. No, it's facts. I'm not running for office. I believe I'm operating in a spirit of prophetic nature as a pastor, as a leader, to say, church, we need to wake up. We have to wake up to what is going on. We can't stick our heads in the sand anymore. People in American White House are flying evil enemy states flags. We have operated behind the scenes as evil. We need to repent. We need to turn from our wicked ways. We need to trust God. God. We need to believe in God. We need to declare His truth, and we need to be on the right side of this deal. And if you're not, and if you're not, I need to encourage you to repent. If you're following CNN and other networks that are telling you that this is Israel's response and they're wrong and blah, 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 let's just wise up a little bit here, folks. Just because someone in our White House, White House flies a flag of Palestine, that doesn't mean they're right. That means they're misplaced. Ezekiel 38 says this, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, 
and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws and lead you out with all your army horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, pause. Do you guys know what Persia is? doesn't exist anymore. Do you know where Persia was? Iran. The Bible is telling us that Iran in the last days will resist Israel and a great Gog Magog of the north will be brought into a battle with Israel. Guess what happens when Russia gets involved? Well, I don't know with this president. I said it. Ezekiel 38, 15, later in the chapter, it's not on the screen, so you better pay attention. Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses in great company and mighty army. This world, our nation, is in an interesting hot mess right now. Can't you sense the peril? Can't you sense the uniqueness We are in the edge of a world war, and our president wants to announce Trans Day. We've got people's heads getting cut off in the Middle East, and our administration and our White House wants to distract and celebrate some of the dumbest, stupidest things I've ever heard of in my life. We're having to go to school board meetings and plead with councilmen and leaders of our public schools to not allow boys to be in the restroom with girls. And people in Israel are forced to represent and live. They have to spend two years in the military. Men and women. Irrelevant. Doesn't matter. You have to. Do you know what the school teachers in Israel have to do? They have to have ARs on their hips. And we're debating whether we should have guns with teachers. They are trained arsonists, not arsonists, that's the wrong word. They are trained military teaching our kids. I hope that never happens here. But if we keep being as stupid as we are, it will. My daughter has been in play. She's been in Annie, Matilda, Beauty and the Beast. And it's so much fun. I don't like all the practices. I'll be honest with you. I don't like taking her to the practices. I, I don't enjoy that. I'd rather take her to softball practice, but <laughs> she loves it, and she's very good at it. There's something that happens to let us know the play's about to begin. You guys know what it is. If you've been there, they, they flick the lights. I believe that what is happening in Israel is God's way of flicking the lights. What are we going to do about it? What is our response? The evil that we see in the world today, the evil that we see even sometimes within us, the evil that we see inside this nation, the evil that we see within the heart of humanity, what do we do about it? As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that no man's good, not one. We're born in our iniquities. How do we counter the evil that we see around the world? How do we counter the evil that we're seeing that's happening in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, in the surrounding nation of Israel? How do we respond to that? We do good. But how do we do good? Well, it's really simple, but sometimes very challenging. We have to turn our lives to God. You say, Pastor Curtis, you got to be kidding me. Can't we give to something? Can't we do something? I'm telling you right now, the proper response for not only God's people but for sinners, people who are not children of God, which there may be some in this room right now who are watching online, your response is to turn from your life and give it to Jesus. That's your response. And in doing that, the Holy Spirit guides you on how to respond to the world around you, how to follow Jesus, how to do good. I want to read something I read to you a couple of weeks ago. A university professor once decided to start up a debate among the students. He asked, did God create everything that exists? The student replied, yes, he did. 
in that case, he also created evil, right? Because evil exists, right? The students were quiet and had no answer to this question. It would seem that the professor had them. The professor had continued the conclusion that faith is, therefore, an illogical myth. Then one student raised their hand and asked, may I ask a question, professor? The professor said, of course. The student said, does cold exist? We know the last couple of days it does, doesn't it? <laughs> of course, my colleague. Haven't you ever felt cold? The student had him where he wanted him. He said, huh, actually, cold does not exist. According to what we learned in physics class today, cold is the absence of heat. The only way to observe it is by watching an object omit heat or transfer energy to other objects. Without heat, objects are inert and unreactive. So cold does not exist. We only made up the word cold to describe the absence of heat. Hmm. Pretty smart little kid. But then what about darkness? Does darkness exist? The the professor said, of course darkness exists. But again, you would be wrong, professor. Darkness is the complete opposite of light and the absence of light. We can study light and brightness, but we can't study darkness itself. The prism displays all the different colors that light consists of, separating the rays based on their wavelengths. But darkness occurs when none of the light is present. Finally, a student went on to ask, Professor, (laughs) Professor, does evil exist? The professor had nothing to say. The student goes on to say, God did not create evil. Evil is the absence of God in people's hearts. The lack of love, humility, humanity, and faith. Love and faith are like warmth and light. They exist. Their absence is what leads to evil. You say, well, those people are killing in the name of God. Wrong God. Wrong God. Wrong God. God. I want to go back to Zechariah 12, 1 as I wrap up. There was something that I, I, I said about three words. Do you remember? I said spirit of man. And I said this is going to be important. I love God's word. I'm amazed all the time. At 44 years old, about to be 45, I read the word of God. And it's like going to, uh, I don't even want to say Disneyland because it's a hot mess. Um, Going to Stricker's Grove all over again. (laughs) The same God who created the heavens, it says it in Zechariah 12, 1. Look, thus says the Lord who stretched out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and does what else? Forms, I would even say, your spirit man within you. It's so crucial that you understand this because what this prophet is saying, before I prophetically tell you what's going to happen in the last days, I want to remind you the same God that is working through me to tell you what's going to happen in Israel is the same God who put a spirit man in you. So that means we do have a proper response to what is going on in the world around us. And it's check yourself. Are you saved? Are you ready for his return? Are you ready if you take your last breath? I am doing life with people right now that are staring death in the face and have the last 48 hours. And I know their heart. They're ready. They're in peace. They have no doubt that if they take their last breath, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. My question is, do you have that confidence? He created us in his image. What's that image? A spirit being within us. Because the reality is if you're not a child of God, if you've not repented, if you're not following Jesus, the Bible says you are dead in your sin. You're dead in your trespasses. There must be a great awakening from within. There must be a supernatural work. We see that in Ephesians 2. So I ask you a few questions as I wrap up. Bottom line is, what's our response to what's going on in Israel? 
it's really not a response, it's an answering of a question. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you know the man that walked in Jerusalem, that was born in Bethlehem, who lived, who died, who rose again? Do you know him? Are you following him? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? Who needs salvation? Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone needs saved. Why do you need salvation? Because of your sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's hope. I understand the grievances. I look at the ladies who were in Israel. They they faced it. They heard it. They smelled it. They were there. I can only imagine. I've never been in war. I've had internal war. I've had some war what I feel with people and against the enemy, but I've never been in war. I could not imagine the distress of what's going on over there. How does God provide salvation? Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, still enemies of him, Christ died for us. On the cross, he said, it is finished. How do we receive salvation? Okay, Pastor Curtis, I see that I need saved. I recognize that it's available to me. As a matter of fact, this thing gets even better. He says it's a free gift to be received. Things received are not grasped. They're received. How do we receive salvation? For with a heart one believes unto righteousness. And with a mouth confesses is made unto salvation. For the scripture says... Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who will call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pastor Curtis, it can't be that easy. Yes, it can. An authentic heart that is sick and tired of the world around them and the world within them. They're sick and tired of what sin has done. It has wrecked you. It has caused you isolation. It has caused you all kinds of diagnoses. It's caused you all kinds of pain. That person that might be just desperate enough to call out on the right name, which is Jesus. Yeshua. In Spanish, Jesus Cristo. The name of Jesus. And what are the results? Boy, this is worth shouting about. What are the results of this salvation? Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by my actions, no, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We should pray for peace in Jerusalem. We should. And we have But I'm also praying today for peace within your soul. You don't find that with a pill. You don't find that with alcohol. You don't find that with relationships. You don't find that with the right job. You don't find that with the right spouse. You don't find that with kids who behave or don't behave. You don't find that outside of Jesus. You don't. There is a counterfeit. Jesus said this about you when he was praying unto the Father. Jesus said about his disciples, give them peace. Not as the world gives, but as I give. A peace that can respond to the world and the turmoil and say, I've got joy. A peace that can say, in him, I'm good. But I want to look at you today and I want to say, If you're not good, if you desire peace in your life, there is someone. The Bible says he's a peacekeeper. He's a peacemaker. He is a comforter. He is God of the whole universe, and he's Lord of my life. Stand with me today.
want everybody to close their eyes. <clears throat> what is the proper response today? <clears throat> With everybody's eyes closed and we're just reflecting. What is the proper response? I know it's not happening in our backyard yet. I know that we're not facing the level of distress that we see in the Middle East right now. So how do we properly respond today? Everything I just told you is necessary to happen before Christ comes back. So the reality is that we are one day closer. That's a guarantee. When? We don't know. Inevitable? Yes. There's two options. Either we see Christ come back or you eventually take your last breath. That is the reality. My question to you today, without hesitation, do you know him? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? This is the question that is put upon all of us. And we must respond today. So with everybody, eyes closed. It's going to be really simple. If you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you're sensing and understanding the turmoil that's around you. You're seeing the wars. You're seeing the rumors of wars. You're seeing things lining up. This is making sense. But you want to say, today I recognize that I must have Jesus. I, I must follow Jesus. Jesus, do me a favor. Just slip up your hand and say, that's me. That's me. Slip up your hand. Come on. Slip up your hand. Praise God. Praise God. Give Lola's hands. Here, here's, what I, here's what I want to ask. This, this is a little extra today. It's a little different today. Here's what I absolutely know. A sincere heart of confession, there's a promise of salvation. I already read the scriptures to you today in Romans. But today, it's really important. You can open your eyes and look at me now so you don't fall asleep. Some of you are rocking with your eyes closed. I know what's going on. La la bye, baby. We want to do this life with you. The Bible says very clearly that we are to make disciples. Disciples are students of Christ and followers of Christ. How can we help you follow Jesus if we don't know your name? Jesus knew his disciples. He traveled with them. He knew people's names. He called them by name. At the woman at the well, called her by name. Knew her name. God of the universe. Knew enough that didn't give her a number. He said her name. You matter to God. He said, whosoever will, let them come. Will you come? Will you come to him? Will you make that choice today? I saw some hands raised. Here's how we can help each other out. This altar space is open to you. I'm going to greet you down here. There's nothing more important than responding to this question. Where you're going to go eat, great. That's awesome. What you're going to do later today, whether the Bengals, are the Bengals playing today? Good. Whether they win or not, hopefully they do. That's all going to be great. What matters right now is that he knows your name. My question is, do you know him? Our proper response today with what's going on in Israel is to support and pray for peace. But I believe it must start here. The same God that has put the promises on Israel is the same God that has spoken a new covenant promise on you. So here's what you're going to do. Ask your neighbor. Ask him right now. Say, do you want to follow Jesus? I'll come up with you. Come forward right now. This is not a count of three. This is none of those things. If you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, ask your neighbor and come forward right now. Come on. This is your opportunity. If that's you. Is that you? Is that you? I saw several hands raised. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's give it up for the Lord. Stand right here. Just stand right here. And stand right here in front. Right here in front of me. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. We should have put an X on the floor. Anybody else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Band, go right back into the song. We're going to give some time, okay? I'm going to visit with them. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. Send us into a song just for a minute. Go ahead and sing. Right here.
as they're singing, if there's anybody else, don't let this moment pass you by. Is there anybody else? There's nothing you can do. The faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I may step fast. And then my heart, and when you speak a word. Church, first off, let's give it up for Jesus. Isn't this awesome? This is really important that that this is not... We are a soulful being. Mind, will, and emotion. Can I just tell you it's okay to be emotional? Some of you fellows, when the Bengals score today, emotions are going to fly. Emotion is okay. But emotion doesn't save you. A dead spirit is awoken. You're able to declare Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because of what has happened on the inside. This new covenant of faith in Jesus, it's not written on walls for us to follow order. It's written on our heart and we come from a place of authenticity of following Jesus. You need to hear me. True salvation, the fruit of that, is the fruit of the Spirit. But you choose Jesus before all things. Before your peers, before anything you say I wake up and go Jesus what do you want me to do today I am following you why because you're not just my savior you're not just fire insurance what's that mean you're not just giving me a ticket out of hell you're my savior you're my lord you're my provider and I'm a new creature in Christ I can't do anything else I have to follow you that is salvation so what I trust and believe that today something out of the natural has happened it's supernatural a new creature in Jesus. You'll never be the same. You can't hear the same. You can't see the same. You can't talk the same. You can't act the same. Here's what I'm also trusting. Some of you out here didn't come forward, but that's actually happening in your heart right now. The Bible does not say, thus shalleth come before the altar of Hamilton Christian Center. You won't be saved. I like this because I want accountability. I want to know your name, but here's the deal. This is what we're going to do. See these little deals you got your smartphones on you i know you do you're all under 25 years old grab your smartphones go ahead and grab them right now we're going to watch this live grab your cell phones you got them on you or if we don't grandma and grandpa knows how to use cell phones these days too scan these qr codes do it right now go move quickly scan these qr codes okay if you just accepted christ there's qr codes about knee high right in front of you you just did that scan it once you scan it click on it okay here's what you're going to do we're going to go back into this song and we're going to take an offering you may be seated I want you guys to head back to this front row only. you got reserved seats for you. Sit in these front rows. Kennedy, make sure they need any help. We get it. Anybody else? 
sit down, click that, and fill out your next steps. We want to be able to follow up with you, okay? One more time, can we give it up for Jesus on what's going on here? Go ahead, absolutely. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this opportunity to give. I believe the Lord has demonstrated right in front of us His heart. My question to this church is, do we have the heart of Jesus? I think the answer is yes. The Bible says He leaves the 99 to find the one. We've all been the one. And today there were several ones that came forward. It's because of His faithfulness unto us. And it's his children that hear his word and hear his voice and follow him. Join a church that is life-giving like HCC. And your time, your talent, your treasure, and your testimony are associated with that. So here's what we're going to do. You know the ways in which you can give. You can scan that QR code like we just did with those who got saved. Give today. Don't hesitate. It's on the screen. The options in which you have, if you're online with us, you can give as well. I want to pray and bless this offering. And then as soon as you do that, come up. You can give in the service. We have five giving stations right now. You can give on the walls. There's multiple options. But as soon as we move right now to give, I want you to stay on your feet, and our worship team is going to lead us, okay? Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. You are blessing this house. Thank you for the responses to the message today. God, we are trusting you evermore. Move in our midst. Bless those today, God. Show us, Lord, how to live, how to give how to be. You desire your people to be generous. You desire your people to fuel the church to move forward. We get to partner. We get to do this, God. Move in our hearts and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Let this be an act of worship as we go back into some worship today and give today. Thank you. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. Can we worship him right now? Right where you are. Come on. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting shame, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Hey, real quick, before we wrap up this service, I need five more minutes of your time. This is an opportunity, I believe, to bless someone. I think it's really cool when someone leaves church and says, hey, I'm rich in my spirit, but I left a little more richer. That's going to happen today. We have an opportunity to gift, and I'm not going to tell you the gift just yet so that we don't have any people that might not tell the truth. If you're absolutely here for the very first time, would you raise your hand? Never been here before. We got one, two, three, Okay. Four, five. Awesome. Keep those. You're going to want to keep those hands up. You may be like Moses and your neighbor needs to hold your arm up for you, okay? Hold that up. Kennedy, move quickly. Keep those arms and hands up. You're going to want to have a pen and you're going to want to put your name on this card. And then as soon as you put your name on this card, put your hand back up. Ushers, I want you to help us out with this. Grab that card from these guests. We're going to place it in this basket right now. And then we're going to draw their name. And I'll tell you what the gift is in a moment. You're going to want to do it. Trust me. Here's the deal. If you're like, I'm not cool with this. I don't want a gift. Then gift someone the gift. Gift someone the gift. Let's just take a moment for this. You got it? You're done? Go ahead and place it in there. Go do it yourself. You're close enough. 
Put your name. Make sure it's legible. I can't, uh, I can't speak my language, which is chicken scratch. We've got two more people. This is so awesome. I don't know about you, but I love being a part of a generous church. Awesome. God has blessed us to bless others. We love to do it. Amazing. Come on. Thank you, Kennedy. Give it up for Kennedy. Isn't she amazing? Chances are really good. Chance. Who wants to help us out? Carly, come here. You've not seen these cards. You don't know what's what. I want you to hold on. Close your eyes and do one of these circles like this and then put your finger down in the box. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Who is it? Our winner today with a $500 Visa card. We don't know who it is yet. Cade Tatum. Is it you? You got the card? Come on up here, man. Congratulations, man. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, he gave his heart to Jesus today and got a gift card. I love it. Come on. Come on. So good. Hey, we still got like almost 30 minutes to the next service. There might be some people going, did you hear about that? Hurry up. Um, be good. Isn't God good? It's awesome. It's awesome. Hey, come back next week. I'm going to continue in this series, get back into the lessons of Elijah. Today was a little pause in that. But there's nothing more counterculture than to follow Jesus right now. Amen? So you guys have done that. Let's put our palms up. I want to bless you. Let's do this now. Precious Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus, I bless those online today, those in the house. It's your blessing upon their lives, your favor. If they've chosen to follow you, there's favor upon their lives. There's peace, not as the world gives, but as you give, Jesus, and we're thankful for it. God, we do pray for peace in Israel. We pray for resolve. We pray for your hand to move, for provision to happen. No more lives destroyed. God, we are trusting you. And I ask for peace in Israel and I ask for peace in our hearts. You are our Savior. You are our Lord. And we are thankful for it. God, we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Jesus, that you went to that cross for us, that you rose again. And we thank you, God, that in Jesus we get to do these three things. We get to know share together. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you and have a great day.